Hello, Erank. Um, yeah, uh, happy Thursday. Welcome to another Thursday live stream with me, Pam, and her, Starla. Um, <laughs> I think I managed to get everything working there just about. Um, it was fast, too. There was, it was just bam. I was there. I was expecting to be in limbo for a few, for a few seconds. <laughs> well, you were from my end, but <laughs> I just like hitting buttons here. I really, really need one of these fancy stream decks that we can split between different scenes and stuff. But yeah, I'm just doing fancy, fancy mouse, mouse moves. But <laughs> hello, e -rankers. This is our live question and answer sessions um, with the e -rank team. So if you have any questions for us and um, get them in in the chat in the Facebook group. And if you're watching the replay on the YouTube channel, there'll be links in the description for how to find the Facebook group if you want to join in for the next time. Um, and that's about it. What did we have? Oh, um, only things, the blog this week is updated because it's the new month. We've got the new keywords for November, what happened in November with Jan's awesome chat about all that. She really is great at picking up the trends and I borrowed her script and made the video of it. <laughs> And Amber's jumping in already with the, the thing that we said we were going to talk about. <laughs> so, yeah. Stella, yeah, what do you think about the Pantone colour, the colour of 2022? I was surprised by how many people didn't like it. So uh, Pantone's colour of the year, for those who aren't familiar with it, every single year Pantone releases their colour of the year. Last year we had two colours and it's the first time I've ever seen it happen. Um, and it was illuminating, which was yellow and a grey colour. And you'll notice that in home decor last year, we saw a lot of yellow paired with grey. Um, we saw it around uh, wedding season. We saw it in stationery. We even saw it around prom. Uh, this year, it is very peri, <clears throat> which is like a kind of pretty light purpley periwinkle color. Um, it's, it's the star cellar purple. <laughs> it does look like star. It's like the same. It's like my how my chair appears on camera. You're on trend. See, if I'm you keep the same thing for years, eventually you become fashionable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I found it kind of weird. So it was this year it's periwinkle. Year before that, it was um <clears throat> it was the illuminating in gray. Year before that, it was a dark blue. I can't remember the exact color. Year before that, it was greenery. No, it was coral, I think year before that it was greenery which was a bright 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 green and then the year before that it was ultraviolet which was a bright purple so now we're we're swinging on back to purple but if you guys make any type of product in the stationary industry in clothing um we're probably going to see it in handbags and accessories because i know that one one tone monochrome outfits are really big like full sweat suits and things and you know Women might want to have the full like outfit with the matching purse all in the same color. Um, we're going to see it in proms. We're going to see it in weddings. We're going to see it in, like I said, in decor, stationery and cards. Um, we're going to see it and jewelry. We're going to see it. And for those of you who do jewelry, the color you're going to want to look for is tanzanite. Tanzanite will be the color that you'll want to match there. But um, I like it. Honestly, I you know, when greenery came out a couple years ago, I didn't see how we were going to translate that to prom. It was like an electric green. It was like a lime bright, bright green. And I was like, uh, I can't see yeah, this getting big. fun, but yeah, not everyone's going to be able to pull that one off, really. Yeah, I like, I mean, and color of the year, I mean, it's not based on what you can do with it. They, I'm sure that there have been plenty colors of the year that don't fit. Um... I like it. It's not my favorite, but I like it more than last year. I mean, I do like yellow, but the yellow and gray, it made things harder when it was two colors. I like the idea of just the one color. Yeah. I mean, look, I know people have been asking how you use this and you don't pivot your entire shop to, ch to chase trends at all. Um, you could look at if you are taking extra you know, pictures for next year, see how you can add a pop of color into them and use this color. 
Um, at best, all that's going to happen is like when people are pulling together like treasury type things, when they're pulling together Pinterest boards or whatever, they might add a few more of that color than anything else. It's not going to bring you hundreds of sales, but it's just a nice, a nice thing to jump on the trends and keep an eye out. I haven't seen it yet, but last year Etsy released their own color of the year as well. So that's worth checking out. I, ha I don't know if they have yet or if they're going to. What was but it last, last year? It was sky blue last year. I didn't see them promoting anything in that <laughs> color. Um, I don't open many of their mail outs, but it is something I, they certainly, when they were talking about it, they pulled up some of them, but yes, the, in their trend reports and things, they were talking about like black and white and things like that more than a sky blue color. But. Yeah. I mean, it's neat. It's, it's cool that they do it, but I, I would prefer to stick with with the Pantone one, if you do it at all. I mean, maybe if you wanted to incorporate in whatever Etsy announced. And like Pam said, you don't have to completely pivot your business model, but if you're sitting there thinking, oh, you know, it's spring, what do I want to make? And you make jewelry and you already have the colors or you like the colors, then maybe you could even put like color, color of the year in your title just to tell people like, this is the hot color this year. Um, you could throw that in. I know that when Amber and I, when Amber was in the U.S., we went to Forever 21, which is young people's clothes. <laughs> and uh, they had a whole Pantone collection of solids. Like the, there was a Pantone clothing line of big like puffer jackets. And they were very bright. It was like bright red puffer jackets and like very 70s and 90s like colors and things. So... Yeah, yeah I know. I've been seeing a lot of that 70s and kind of disco neon looking colors. Yeah. Actually. So it's strange that Pantone's actually quite so subdued. I can see there's a lot more you can do with it. And, you know, making things in a kind of purpley, lilac y color is, is popular. It's pretty. It's, yeah, yeah. it's inoffensive. I, I think I, I'm surprised if people are bothered by it, you know, if people dislike it. It's inoffensive. Yeah, a lot of people did not like the color very much. So maybe it's maybe they just have a bad uh, bad experience with it. But how can you have a bad experience with purple? Purple's yeah. awesome. Come on, people. <laughs> when they grew up, their childhood bedroom was purple, <laughs> and that year Santa did not bring them any presents. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, uh, guys. We received back from our wonderful designer the all-new E-Rank holiday banner for the group. You guys might have noticed the Christmas party one that we've had up for the last few weeks. If not, maybe go take one last look because I'm about to change it live to the brand new one for, for Christmas. So say goodbye to everybody rocking around the Christmas tree. I think Randy was holding a turkey. Pam, I don't know what you were doing. I think you're sitting on the ground or something. Um, yeah, me and you are sitting on the ground with presents. And Mark is peeking behind me like a creeper. <laughs> yep. All right. Oh, yeah. I see Irina with a Christmas with a little cake. That's, that looks like a good party. But guys, it's going. So it's have your going. last look. <laughs> All right. Are we ready? Three, this two, is a good one. And... Come on, Facebook. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> New one is up. Sorry, I'm like losing my voice. Now we are all sledding. So guys, um, while, you're running, so cool. <laughs> while you're running to look at the new banner, make sure that you get questions in. I know it's always a little bit harder after Black Friday to think of anything to ask. We're hitting that kind of state of limbo. I will say that Amber sent me a, an article from Etsy on your guys's dashboard where Etsy gives you like that little to-do list on, on your dashboard, there's a new button that says something about um, holiday shipping deadlines and they've updated their article of holiday shipping deadlines. Essentially it's all the same dates. They're way too close to the mark. So just make sure that you're not promising delivery I would say now is it's safe to start saying, you know, oh, you know, I'll ship, I'll ship your order, but I can't promise that it'll arrive uh, by Christmas because really we're hitting that part where if they're not paying an astronomical amount of money, um, it's 
getting harder and harder for these items to arrive on time. And the closer to Christmas we are, the slower the mail is going to be. I just had um, a very large package arrive yesterday from uh, FedEx. And my FedEx guy, I mean, he got he was kind of nasty with me. <laughs> I can understand. He was probably uh, very busy, but he like was trying to carry my package up to the door and I tried to take it from him. And he's like, no, 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 I've got it. I'm in a rush. And I was like, oh, okay. okay so you taking it would be slower? How? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that you thought I could true. carry it. So yeah. yeah. Um, Amber said I had a customer wanting an order by Saturday. I was like, I can post it, but orders are taking about six days at the moment. And that was probably locally too. That probably wasn't an international for anybody doing international right now. You cut off. It's tape. not going to happen. No, yeah. no, definitely not. I, uh, I ordered some things international four weeks ago and they haven't arrived so yeah it's in the uk we're not so bad just uk to uk but i wouldn't guarantee it now but i or i'm i do these phases with shopping it's like some days some weeks you do nothing and then suddenly amazon sucks you in but i ordered a ton of things and some of them half of them arrived next day and some of them have taken two weeks so that's just UK to UK, so there's no way of knowing just now. And in fact, my mum's up in the Highlands of Scotland. For those that don't know, it's quite remote, and quite a lot of places will say, we ship anywhere in the UK. Well, apart from that top third of the UK. Yeah, we don't do that. But we both ordered something on the same day, and hers arrived two days before mine. And I'm like in the, the populated bit, and she's in the middle of nowhere. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Sharon said Royal Mail in the UK is rocking it. I'm sending items via two or second class, two to three day service, and they're arriving next day. Don't count on it though. Yeah, they can be really good, but just sometimes this time of year, just that little package can get a little kick to the back of a corner and get lost for a couple of days. Yeah. And Amber said that they submitted uh, COVID tests on Saturday and they're still waiting on results. And they were sent, uh, sent 24 tracked Royal Mail. Yeah, that should be next, next day tracked. Yeah, 24 hour. Yeah. Um, yeah, fingers <laughs> fingers crossed. That's that's one you do need, like, quickly. Finger, but, oh, of course, yes, because you need to get out of isolation. Um <laughs> And poor Amber, she's still on lockdown from coming to my house in the States. Not that we're sick, but they don't want her going anywhere until they've tested. So, um, oh, guys, we're 15 minutes in. If you have any questions, I don't think we've had any questions yet. Not really, no. If we don't get any questions, then Pam and I are going to, I don't know, we're going to sing you a song. Oh, don't wish that on anyone. My, my singing's not happening. <laughs> That's why we should get questions in. What were right, some yeah. of the trending terms that we saw on E-Rank? I know that we saw a lot of um, cottage core. What were some of those fleeting terms that just popped up out of nowhere? DIY? DIY, yep. All things DIY and do it yourself. Um, really big, which is great news. Um, so I think the past couple of years we've been talking about craft kits were going to be big, but it seems people are coming in like, I don't know about you guys, but in the UK, DIY makes me think of like decorating. But it seems to be DIY to mean craft kits and, you know, crafting, crafting yourself. So I've been saying forever, see if you make cards. I say this one to my mom all the time. <laughs> if you make cards and you, you've got the machines that are cutting, like doing all the die cuts and everything to make a card, cut out 10 at a time, make make one or two cards and bag the rest as a kit for people to make the cards and things like that. You know, the, some of the biggest shops on Etsy are like craft supply, tutorials, kits, all these kind of things. And Amber, yes, that, that behind me is my advent calendar. <laughs> I have, it's a, it's a bag of goodies every day for crafting. It's a, it's oh. a crafting advent calendar. It's very cool. I got, this is so pretty i got some blue wool with sparkles in it <laughs> the last one so nice and 
just get them, open them up, and then see what you're inspired to make. That's fun. It's not got chocolate in it, though. I think calendars <laughs> should all have chocolate in them. And I always have bad chocolate in them, too. That's true, yeah. I want, like, an Oreo, Oreo advent calendar. Um, so looking at the top keywords, a lot of them are just kind of really blunt, just gifts for her, gifts for him, personalized gifts, gifts, jewelry, gifts for kids. But we are seeing a lot of decor, holiday and home and minimalist, which minimalist yep. can be tied into home and jewelry and yes. accessories. Um, what is it? Minimalist and mid-century modern. Really look out for those ones, guys. They've blown up in the past couple of months. So, yes, really big. I think it's it's like a rebelling from the cottage core stuff. So it, it, all the trends I've been looking at over this past year have been like opposites. So it's minimalist and cottage core or like clothes have been like floaty modest dresses or figure hugging cutout dresses. There's no in between. It's one or the other. Yeah. Let's see. And it's crazy how much the UK is similar other than 1950s coat and 1930s vintage dress. What are you guys doing over there? There's a lot of vintage stuff. Um, my mum follows the like card making crafting trend. And Jan had mentioned in the trend report as well, 1920s. But that whole art deco, huge. 1950s is sort of the mid-century modern. So... That makes sense. With it being clothing, could it possibly be, um, do you guys have any like holiday markets where people dress up? Um, do you have like something where people might do, you know what I mean? Like do like an old timey market for um, holidays? Not really. Not like the way I see it with you. What I do know, um, there are like cafes and things opening up with the whole 1950s kind of thing but that's been going on for a couple of years now um but yeah i don't know um oh amber you have dickensian evenings Ooh. <laughs> and yes there's victorian christmas nights and things um like street street party things um but i knew that like the stall holders would tend to dress up not so much people Interesting. Interesting. Um, apparently, we're kind of cutting in and out today. So sorry if we're cutting in and out. It might be on B Lives end. It did take forever to start going live, so there might be something up there. My internet looks good, but yeah, sorry, technology. I'm afraid there's there's no buttons to press to make it work better we have very little control over this yeah yeah let's see on a hot yesterday aside from gifty gift terms it looks like gifts for mom is our is our big hot term you know what's crazy is i'm not even seeing a lot of things in particular that were hot yesterday and maybe that's just because that overall holiday shopping rush has kind of died down, especially with us already being so close to Christmas and buyers typically assuming that Etsy isn't going to ship in time now that we're hitting, you know, we're, we're literally hitting that crunch time period. Yeah. I, I think this, this time the, what people are searching for is very much going to change. I've been finding the customers I've been getting now are not looking for Christmas. It's sadly people whose friends have lost pets and things. So it's thoughtful gifts for people for January. Um, so yeah, the, the keywords are completely changing. It's, it's really odd to look at. Let's see. Um, is your name Humaira? asked how to make useful Etsy collections. Um, I wouldn't say that Etsy collections are really useful. Unless you, yeah, mean, unless you mean the collection launch, do you mean like the collections that you can make through Etsy? Yeah, that's how I read it. But collection launch is cool as well. But yeah, for everyone that doesn't know, Etsy collections are when you're 
like when you're hearting something you can now put it into a collection which is really like what the old treasuries used to be like sort of so it's a way to collect things together and other people can see them and stuff but it's not so much how to make useful collections i would be doing them how to make them useful for you so what are you looking for i think like making pinterest board or you know your little shopping guide and stuff um yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess if you want it to be, um, if you wanted to be super data driven about it, yeah, Etsy says you can favor it and make a collection. That's those are really for you. I would say that um, if you really wanted to be driven about it, you could totally go into E Rank and find some trending things. Like if you saw that cottage core was trending, you could maybe make a cottage core Etsy collection. And then if you have products that fit into the cottage core niche, you just happen to add one or two of your own products into the collection along with some other, you know, sellers who also have similar items. Um, but they're not really, a, they're more for shoppers. They're not so much for sellers to get their product out there, though I'm sure it's very nice if someone adds you to one. Um, I wouldn't say that they're particularly, like, useful, though, because that's not their intended person, their intended mm. purpose. The only, I actually found one thing that was super cool with them as me not using them but looking into them was I found when I looked in one of my listings at the bottom it said all the collections it was in so I was able to click on that and it gave me ideas of other things that people liked that were like my item so I make dog sculptures so if they were like putting a lot of the same breed of dog into it I could go oh maybe you know, this, this is kind of popular or, you know, just getting an idea of what things people liked. I found that super helpful, but that's just, it's not something I would spend more than 10 minutes doing. It's just a, a nice little quick, oh, there's interesting. Yeah, like some um, target market exercises. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Linda had said, I just want to thank you guys. In E rank, I've hit over 400 sales and just had 29 sales in 30 days, double my income since last year. Much is from using E rank and following you guys. Happy dance. Awesome, Linda. Awesome. That's so that. cool. Yay. <laughs> Great. Um, Amber said that she makes little shopping guides with hers, with her Etsy, um, whatever they're called, collections, uh, but super specific of about it for myself so fantasy bookcase is one of mine it's essentially a pinterest board of just etsy items exactly it is a place where you can put all of your cool things that you found on etsy but you can kind of organize them in a neat way by theme yeah it, it's more it, it's more useful for you and a bit of fun well will i'm seeing a lot and this isn't for whoever asked the question sorry i can't i can't see names here but it's for everyone every time etsy launches something so many people are saying i did this and it's not getting me more sales not everything etsy gives us is to get us more sales it might be to help us more as buyers which is lovely you know these kind of boards is is lovely for us for those who were around when treasuries were around it was fun it, i met people you know i made friends with people <laughs> through treasuries i found things to buy through treasuries so i see this you know your likes were getting a bit bloated they weren't making a lot of sense this way you can group them together you know here's my my likes here's the things i'm shopping for mum here's the things i'm shopping for someone else here's the things i'm gonna put in my new room that i'm creating so yeah it's it's to help you as a buyer rather than a seller yeah but they are fun. I definitely recommend playing around with them, um, especially if, if you shop on Etsy a lot. It gives you a really cool way to build build aesthetics. And you know, you could also use them if you're trying to see what other products your product might pair well with. If you've ever wanted to do like a collaborative giveaway or something like that, it, it can help you to kind of just get some ideas and learn a little bit more about your target customers and what they might be interested in. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, Amber, I'm loving your profile picture. You've got, I see you've got a Starla there. We look like a happy married couple, don't we? Uh -huh. <laughs> That's us at uh, Mark's grandma's house having our Thanksgiving. We, she was, I think I was wearing a turkey headband and she was wearing a little pumpkin pie headband. <laughs> Very cute. <laughs>
I was going through and trying to see if there was anything else notable on Etsy uh, in terms of trending. But it's nothing is really boring. standing out to me. Yep. Yeah, a lot of it is all. I love how Harry Styles is um, two, two searches more popular than Harry Potter, though none of you should use either of those terms in your tags or titles because both are copyright. But it's funny, Harry Styles is, is more popular than Harry Potter. He's apparently the superior Harry on Etsy. He's the hairiest. <laughs> <laughs> He's the hairiest Styles. Are we having a, a battle of Harrys now? <laughs> <laughs> the battle of the Harrys. Yay. <laughs> that sounds like something that a, that a good like beard shop should do is their, their promotion, the battle of the Harrys, and everyone oh, submits wow. their photos of their beards. Totally sure. There was there's actually a shop on Etsy that I used to I've got a I've got a friend with a beard and I used to get him products. And it just had the best name. It's the Baldy Beardy Bloke. <laughs> <laughs> that says everything you need. <laughs> so so we'll tell him we, we've got a, a Harry battle for him. <laughs> a Harry battle. <laughs> All right, guys. We're about 30 minutes in. So get your questions in, whether they're related to E-Rank, E-Rank Tools, um, Etsy, the last minute holiday rush, or even how you plan to prepare for January. I did have a couple of my own followers ask me when would be a good time to start working on tags and titles because they didn't want to touch anything over the holiday season. I would say the week leading up to Christmas would probably be fine if you don't have anything better to do, though I, I highly recommend taking Christmas week off if you're able to. Enjoy yourself. Don't stress too much. You've got plenty of time to work on these things. Um, enjoy your holiday. But if you're looking just for when it would be safe to start um, so you don't jinx anything, Christmas week, I mean, really Christmas shopping on Etsy is already starting to kind of die down. You might get some of those last minute shoppers who may or may not receive their order on time, just depending on how you're shipping and where they're at. But if you really want to start and you need something to do and you're bored out of your mind over holiday week, I would say that that would be an okay time to start looking at tags and titles. Um, I would start by looking at any of the listings that you already have in your shop that are not performing. You want to take the ones that don't have any traffic at all. And before you start messing with SEO, um, I would honestly start with photos and see if you have any suggestions for photos. I know that you could probably post your your thumbnail photo at least in the E-Rank group and say, um, you know, do does anyone have any suggestions for this thumbnail photo? Does it need to be brightened? Should I reshoot it? You could probably get some ideas by looking at some of your competitors and kind of seeing what they're doing for their photos. Because if you look at what your image looks like on a search page compared to everybody else that's listed around it, you need to make sure that you measure up. And if you're only doing good enough with your photos, then you're not doing good enough. So start with photos. And then if you know that your SEO is bad, then start working on those listings very, very slowly. Before you start actually making any of those changes, maybe go into the change tracker tool on E-Rank, track that listing. You can do that by going to your actual listings page on E-Rank and there's gonna be a little button that says track listing. Um, click that. Track that listing for maybe a week before you make any changes, just so you can kind of see if if there really is no traffic coming in on it. And then if you notice that it's doing kind of poorly compared to some of your other listings, do a little bit of tweaking and then keep watching that track changes tool because then you can really see how the changes you made affect your overall views, favorites, and sales for that listing over time. Now, obviously, we are in the post-holiday season slump. Um, so we're not going to see the kind of traffic that we saw in November, part of December. Um, so don't compare your results to like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, whatever your best day was this season. But yeah, it, you should be able to at least increase your views a little bit and know that you're on the right track. Yeah. The other thing that it's super important to do that you can do just now or definitely do before you change things, but we've just had 
the busiest time for people searching. So get into your stats and see what those keywords were that people have found you for already. And um, one thing I like to do is usually do it in January, but you can start doing it from now. Get yourself, if you've got a paid subscription for eRank, um, if you've not, just use a notepad. But if you've got a paid subscription, use a keyword list to make your Christmas keywords because a lot of keywords repeat themselves at Christmas. They are very, very seasonal for Christmas. So make a list and make this keyword list that say, look at me in September. And, you know, at the end of the summer, you have this list already made that you can just drop these keywords into some listings and things. Yeah, that's a really, really good idea because those are the ones that you can expect to see kind of spike again. Um, Debbie said, sometimes I use the reg checker to see my com uh, my competition's images. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I I always scroll down and, and look. It's good to see. Um, we talked about this a lot, actually, but you know, your difference if you were selling a wedding ring to if you were selling some you know what was one of the trends lesbian earrings or something the types of photography is so different so you don't if you're selling a wedding ring you tend not to want the cheap cheerful bright neon colored photographs people want elegant and expensive looking <laughs> but so you'll tend to find that they'll all be very elegant pictures so if you look down and everyone on the front page has a certain type of picture you don't want to copy them exactly but that is kind of what's working so you don't want to go so far different that you stand out in a bad way and um, that's that's easy to do i've done it myself it's just like wow that'll totally stand out it's like no it makes me look like i'm six stop it pam <laughs> you don't the crazy don't. colors <laughs> yeah doesn't quite work <laughs> yeah yeah i see it a lot um the polymer clay jewelry that it's all just kind of geometric shapes and things it was really big in the um in the 80s and 90s that's coming back and I've seen a lot of sellers who do the crazy backgrounds with those and they look really nice because it fits that that 80s, 90s, you know, trend. I could see somebody who has a, you know, 80s theme party at work that they need to dress for totally shopping from a shop like that. So. Oh, absolutely. I can totally see the geometric like black and white things. If you've got a pink and purple pow background, <laughs> that's that's the thing for that. Don't put your wedding rings on that background. <laughs> Unless you're doing big, crazy, colorful 80s wedding rings. Yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> but a very, very niche market. <laughs> your, what was it? Your steampunk opal? Yes, Brandon, bronze and opal steampunk engagement ring. Yes, that. Two of those showed up in search once. Someone must have been... Don't, see, when you're listening to me or Starla for advice, don't take us quite that literally. <laughs> These are just examples. I try to make things up that nobody would ever search just to use for the sake of example. And yeah, like my floop de doop de dee does. I always go, you know, if you list floop de doop de dee does on Etsy and... Oh, someday, someday I'm gonna search yeah, I'm gonna and I'm gonna check, find. Yeah, it's gonna happen. In fact, that could be our our e rank keyword. <laughs> Flip, did, did. Flip, That's did, something did, that we don't have. Like, how many O's is in that? <laughs> Flip, de, doop, de, de, da. Yeah, that should be our next alpha dap listing. We did do the ugly Friday bean, the ugly bean design <laughs> in our Etsy shop, and told people not to buy it, and it ended up being a bestseller. So I think that of was some. Yeah, reverse psychology at play. Yeah. Oh, it's the best thing. Um, yeah, we did. I can't remember if I said this, but years ago I was given out flyers from a friend's club. And when we handed the flyer to people, 90% of the people would just take it and drop it. But when I turned them upside down and handed them a blank bit of paper and was just like, don't tell anyone. And had uh, nobody dropped it because they had to check. They had to turn it over and check it and look at it, and they kept it. It was really bizarre how people work. <laughs> yeah, there's so many fun little things. And if you guys are interested in in stuff like that, and if you have uh, family members who are calling you up on the phone, what do you want for Christmas? And you're too embarrassed to say rent or a new vacuum cleaner or 
a pack of light bulbs, which I, that's what I asked for. I asked for Philips Hue light bulbs, but apparently no one wants to buy me light bulbs for Christmas. I mean, they're, they're expensive, but nobody wants to buy them. But anyway, um, if you need ideas for things to ask for, I highly recommend getting the book Predictably Irrational by Dan Ariely. It was my favorite psychology book, and it's going to teach you some of the irrational people, irrational things that people do without even realizing it. And even once you're aware of those irrational things, you're still going to do them. Um, I would put that number one on your reading list if you enjoy to read and you want to find something that could help you with your selling strategies without being salesy. I'm not a fan of business books simply because most business books are written by rich guys who want to get richer by selling their book about how they got rich. So <laughs> I prefer psychology books because you can read a concept in psychology that is meant to be applied to anything and you can apply apply it to business. So Predictably Irrational by Dan Ariely. Um, and if you guys want more business book suggestions, let me know because I've got tons of those. But Predictably Irrational is my favorite. Cool. Sounds good. No, it's always helpful. Like you say, it's not just these business people are just trying to make money, but also whatever they did to make money, they did it like 30 years ago. So if you're like looking at some psychology book and you're figuring out things for yourself then you're you're leading you're you're starting and doing stuff that other people haven't used so exactly yeah, yeah. and that's why when um oh selfless plug i guess i could have mentioned handmade alpha academy my coaching program it closes tomorrow <laughs> night so if you want to enroll in that you've got until midnight tomorrow um and there you can get a thousand dollars off if you go to handmadealphaacademy.com slash vip um, that's the discounted link, but yeah, in handmade alpha Academy, when I was building that program, you know, there are so many business people out there who talk about like success secrets. Here's my success formula, my success secret, my success uh, secret thing that nobody knows. And I'm giving it to you. If it was a secret, if it was really your success secret, it would be everywhere. The thing is psychology is everywhere. You can pick up any psychology book and learn a bit of psychology and learn about business. It's just most people aren't able to read it and figure out how to apply it. So that's why we made HAA was we wanted to take those things that you could read in a psychology book, but teach people how to apply it practically. Um, there are so many things in psychology that you can learn and apply to your business that you wouldn't think have anything to do with business itself. For example, when I was uh, in high school, I went to a tech school and I was a preschool teacher and I was going to go to college for preschool until I realized that it didn't pay anything. But um, I took some color psychology for early childhood education and we talked about how different colors of rooms influence the children's brain and their behavior and things like that. I never realized that those exact same lessons that I learned for children translate directly over to branding a business where if you think about the color orange, it's actionable and it's excitable and it is a color that we associate with motion. Um, and it's also a color that we associate with caution. So you'll notice that most road signs, barrels on the highway, those are all orange, but there are brands like Nickelodeon, which is a child's brand, uh, Nerf, Nerf guns for kids. Their branding is all orange because orange is a color that we typically see for children. Anything that is done in blue typically wants to express trust. That's why we see most financial institutions, Facebook, Twitter, all of theirs are in blue because it is more calm and professional. So when branding your business, that's another little layer that you can apply is, is just learning the basis of color psychology and not just choosing the colors that look pretty. Yeah, um, I find a lot of these books, it, it's good to have people that can help you through them because psychology books are written by psychologists and they might actually be explaining a really simple term, but they're not explaining it really well. I actually did a, a lot of engineering stuff at uni and I found the engineering books, the hardest thing was reading what they'd written. Once you got it, you're like, that is so easy. Why couldn't you have just said it like that? So yeah, if you've got someone to help you translate the books, <laughs> that helps. There's there's like tends to be a lot of good advice in these kind of things, but you sometimes need 
people to explain it in different ways. So yeah, find find people that can explain things in ways that make sense to you. And so right. you can all, you can test drive Starla by asking her questions just now and see you if you can. <laughs> it's like a free sample. And exactly. HAA, if if you are interested in me coaching you, it does have a thirty day money back guarantee, and we don't require you to do anything gross like submit homework. Amber bought a course where they made her prove that she tried. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like that's how do you how do you how do you know that someone is trying to make it as hard as possible for you to get your money back? Oh, you need to prove that you tried. Like that is the schemiest thing. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh Lana asked, can I use the word Cinderella in my tags? And I just did a quick check on it um because I, I was pretty sure that it was in the public domain. And yes, uh Cinderella is in the public domain. Snow White apparently is also in the public domain which I did not know. And I know that um, all Alice in Wonderland related terms are in the public domain, as long as you are not using any imagery or words that are exclusively used in the Disney adaptations. Uh, for example, if you wanted to do an Alice in Wonderland collection, you totally could because Alice in Wonderland, the original story is in the public domain because it is over 90 years old. Um, I can't remember. It's it's I think it's seven years after the death of the author or something. There's something crazy. There's different rules, um, but that is the super important thing. If you're seeing Cinderella or Alice in Wonderland or whatever, you're not talking about what Disney did. You're talking about the original story. Yeah. So, unfortunately, if you hear Alice in Wonderland, you think of the girl in the what's it blue dress and stuff like that yeah not that <laughs> you can't have alice that looks like that you can do alice as in described in the book not as shown by disney yeah um let's see all works published and unpublished are protected for 70 years from the date the author dies so just make sure that you do your homework and don't use any imagery. But yes, if you're just putting it in your tags and titles, as long as you don't add anything Disney related in there, uh, you should be fine. I've been learning a lot about uh, U.S. copyrights because I'm going to, my book uh, is, technically it's up for pre-order now, but it's like Amazon is having trouble syncing and the hardback currently doesn't show that it has a book cover and paperback hasn't synced yet. It's a big mess, so I haven't announced it yet. But um, yeah, I was thinking about going ahead and filing for the copyright on my book. That way, if anybody, um, you know, on Etsy decides to be a butthead and steal my imagery and make products based on my characters without my permission, um, I would actually have the the copyright. Though when you do write, when you write something, when you create something, you do have the copyright. You have a general copyright on your work. It's harder to file and dispute it, though, unless you own the copyright. I believe that I'm going to pay $49 for my full published work, which is for that's uh, nothing. Yeah, that's for 140,000 words that I'm copywriting. So I'm like, you know what? That's that sounds like a fair price to me. Um, yeah. So, yeah, getting if you guys do anything similar, filing for the copyright. Apparently isn't that expensive now that I've actually started looking into it, though the website is one of the most confusing things that I have ever seen. I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah, any kind of legal things that, just like we said, they make it deliberately difficult so that lawyers can make all their money just translating the nonsense. Why don't they, why do their websites all look like they were built in 1992? Their I know that they have money. I know that they have a ton of money. I'm about to give them money. They have money. Why do they not have somebody designated to make their website look like a modern website? I say the same every <laughs> time I try and put in my taxes. The website website's just like, how, how can it take three days to get the password to work? Like, seriously, this is not difficult, guys. Yeah, somebody they need they need to take my course on branding for sure. They need to learn how to brand their weird government websites better. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, we're hitting that last fifteen minutes. Um, 
you want to speed round? We've had all of about two questions today, <laughs> but we'll speed round and watch all the questions come in. Let's see, uh, let's see if I can remember how to do that. Yay! There With my super, well, the questions are as fast as the oh, it goes that way, as fast as the crawler. There it goes. Where is it? Where is it? It's there. It's there. I've got it, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. <laughs> this is what happens when you guys don't ask questions. Pam and I are, are, are stuck trying to, oh, no, this way. Everything's opposite. Oh, I know. That way, yeah. <laughs> Amber said, I have no questions. Oh. Samantha said, definitely research the originals of things like Cinderella and double check copyright of old authors. Peter Pan's author died, but he left in his will the copyright to uh, Great Ormond Street Hospital. So all profit goes to them. Yeah. And it, it it's really a quick Google search for most things. Um, you can, I mean, when the Cinderella question popped up, I, I just Googled it. So um, just ask, you know, when you're, when you're checking Google is blah, blah, blah in the public domain. And then you'll find tons of articles. And then if you need that extra help, if you need to ask some questions, um, you can always go to justanswer.com and ask a lawyer for a couple dollars. Ooh, of course, all the questions flood in right now. This is speed uh, round. <laughs> all right. Grace said some keywords uh, are under 200 searches monthly. Is it worth it to still use that keyword? Probably. Depends how descriptive it is to your item and things, how easy it is for you to rank for, how you compare to all the competition. You're not going to get hundreds of sales from that. But if that one listing gets the chance of getting seen a couple of hundred times a month, you have hundreds, you have the potential for hundreds of other listings in your shop as well. And 13 other tags for that for that listing so yeah i i don't 200 actually good compared to some of what i found so yeah yeah um i would i would say do a balance do a balance of highly searched and um high search high competition if because i mean it's going to be hard to find high search low competition let's let's be real so uh high searches and then balance with some lower searches but lower competitions i i like to throw in a little bit of both absolutely linda said when's a good time to start valentine's day items now yep. I'm, I'm making valentine's day gnomes just now <laughs> i don't know if i'm gonna sell them yet but i'm making them <laughs> they're cute though i saw them i like them I, and gnomes are big right now yeah uh -huh, they totally are <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Elaine said, oh, God, I can't. I can never say this word. I can never say it. You're going to say it. I, I, need, help you. I need to design a chubby animal amigurumi next month, which are the cute little crocheted critters that, yeah. Uh, what animal is hot right now? There's a couple. Axolotls have been big for a while. Mm -hmm. um, llamas are still pretty big. I've noticed a lot of foxes lately. Bears, chubby bears have been in, especially um, if you're doing it soon. I know little polar bears are, are going to be still big through January and February. Any animals you've noticed? Um, red pandas are making well, a comeback. <laughs> <laughs> um, and actually, strangely, I've been seeing sloths again. They seem to be big. Um, I don't think we've seen anything showing in our trend reports but keep an eye on the daily trend buzz and see if anything pops up yeah i'm taking a little scroll through to see if any critters have popped up i've seen cat cat is on there i've seen um a Ooh, lot of I got debbie not debbie jan hit me with one so this is a secret a secret from jan um so i'm not supposed to tell you all this but she did say that highland cows are big just now so she was surprised oh. to see that. Oh, and they're also very cute. <laughs> Let's see, Amber. Amber wants a cardigan corgi because anytime anyone has a corgi product, it's always the stereotypical little brown and white corgi that everybody buys for me because for some reason they think my Shiba Inu is a corgi. But no, she has a cardigan corgi, and there are enough car cardigan corgi products. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, corgi. Actually, I did corgi. I don't have them up here. I did corgi 
bookmark for just for fun and I didn't push it and that's been one of my top sellers this Christmas period so oh. yeah cookies are accidentally good Elaine's at a Highland Cows have been one of my uh, best sellers Yee. that's interesting <laughs> I wonder I wonder why I wonder what made them so so trendy I have no idea. Um, I it's about seven or eight years ago there was a big trend for them. I made loads of them. I I should really have been pushing them a bit this year. I don't I don't know why they took off. They are cute. But. Oh, um, another thing that you can do is look at what's going to be popular in movies, and don't make things based on the movies themselves. But for example, like when Cruella came out, um, you know, Dalmatians were probably more popular especially with kids uh because all the kids I, I saw so many cruella little kids on halloween you would not believe how many little cruellas were walking around but um there's it's a new movie so coming, what's that um the movie coming out with uh the rock is voicing the super dog there's it's a new like little animated movie with dogs and you could do different breeds of dogs based on the Ooh. movie um yeah, but look at what's popular. When Game of Thrones was big, I remember I did uh, a bunch of just dragon keys and wolf keys, and I didn't call them Game of Thrones keys, but dragons got really, really popular around that time, and wolves got really, really popular around that time. So the sales of my dragon and wolf keys spiked. And then I said to myself, well, these are selling so well, I'll make a couple set with one dragon key and one wolf key and sell them together as a set. And guess what? item in my pot became a bestseller the dragon and wolf cool. well that's a good point because when's the new there is a new game of thrones one being filmed just now and it is going to have, that's it it's gonna have dragons so yay i get an excuse to make lots of dragons yes dragons are going to get big again just make sure that you don't uh if any of you make any dragony type products don't make them look like game of thrones dragons but yeah, yeah. If you can't use the word you can't, you can't say game of thrones but they don't own dragons and they don't own dire wolves or things they, these were real well no yes dragons were real creatures yeah absolutely absolutely <laughs> but yes that they none of these companies own real creatures but you can't say based on game of thrones i'm doing this dragon but you can say here is a purple dragon um people and actually that's the cool thing because Etsy is updating the search for based on what you were searching for so if someone's been searching for Game of Thrones and then searches for something different and say you had a dragon or something then you're more likely to be shown if it kind of matches up with both of the searches even though you haven't said Game of Thrones because the search might start to understand oh yeah, people who search for Game of Thrones like dragons. So the the search is getting more clever. It's not there yet. Don't rely on it, but yeah. Yeah. Certainly. Just just wait for all those um those sellers to pop up here in a couple months who are, you know, upset because HBO sent them a copyright claim because they've made Game of Thrones products. Game of Thrones kind of died out there for a little while after the last season kind of bombed. We quit talking yeah. about it. But it's about to spike up because everybody's favorite house was Targaryen and everybody was obsessed with the dragons. And now they're going to, of course, make a show just about the dragons. So it's yeah, going to get big. Going to be huge. Yeah. <laughs> and remember what we always say. It's not if you get caught. It's when you get caught. Oh, uh, yeah. Don't try and mess with them. HBO have ridiculous money these days. They're they're going to be challenging for Disney for being the the most hard hard stomping down on their copyright, I bet you. I don't know. Nintendo, in my experience, has been the craziest. Nintendo doesn't even allow um, gamers, like streamers, to yeah. to play their games. Even though they're, they're literally showing them advertising, you know, them reviewing games, they don't allow you to do that because... They don't yeah, want their Nintendo they were harsh. Yes. Yeah, and that's that's always makes me nervous when I see everybody making Pokemon products and Mario products. I'm like, oh, this is all owned by Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Samantha said, I'm Welsh. Dragons were totally real. Of course they were. Yes. 
I love that our in in the UK it's what England has a lion. You're like, okay, lions, whatever. But the Welsh have a dragon as their heraldic animal and the Scots have a unicorn. So <laughs> we have crazy heraldic animals. I love it. I, I love that our, our animal is something that has a weapon on its head. It's brilliant. <laughs> better than our our eagle i've never even seen an eagle in the wild i mean i know that we have like i think there's like two a, a, a nest of them two of them somewhere near us but the news always talks about our two eagles like it's not like there's oh, eagles like from that government. yeah so, oh wow you know what our nation's bird was supposed to be a little bit of trivia for you no go on it was supposed to be a turkey I believe that um, I believe that Thomas Jefferson proposed to Turkey. Turkey didn't make a cup. I, it might I not have been Jefferson. I think it was. Why, yeah, I can see why, but yes, it, it's not very heraldic. It's no. I don't, I don't know if anybody would be. Aren't you glad Ben Franklin didn't get his way? Okay, maybe it was Ben. Was it Ben Franklin who? I thought it was Jefferson. Maybe it was Ben Franklin who wanted the turkey. Was it the turkey? Pretty sure it was the turkey. Yeah. Oh, that that would be hilarious, but. So yeah, an, an eagle is a little bit more sort of regal looking. <laughs> it is yeah. much better. But yeah, I thought you kind of had them all over the place. No, I've never seen an eagle. I've seen we're up north too, and we don't have any. But who said one? Of, somebody said that they have them in Florida. I now I got to Google it. Who proposed the turkey <laughs> be the national bird? Ben Franklin. You were right. I was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I was very wrong. That is so bonkers. <laughs> it was one. That's one of those things that, like, you learn is like a bonus lesson where the teacher's like, "Oh, by the way." <laughs> oh god. Yeah, but it's the stupid thing that sticks in your head. Although you didn't, yeah. the, the right president didn't stick in your head. But <laughs> the most ridiculous trivial. I remember. This is absolutely stupid, but I remember it from. About 20 years ago in a pub quiz, there was a bit of trivia asking what the 51st tallest mountain in the world was. And it's Eric. I don't know if it still is, but I just <laughs> I remember that from the pub quiz because it was so ridiculous that there's a mountain called Eric. Eric. Yeah. <laughs> Eric. It's probably not even true. I mean, there's pub quizzes before Google. Like we couldn't check if he was lying or not, but I've always remembered it. All right. On that note, guys, thanks so much for joining us. If you're watching on YouTube, our uh, Q&As are normally a lot more content filled than this. And you can participate in the conversation by joining the E-Rank group on Facebook down below. Fill our comment section. Give us something to answer for next week because otherwise we will end up talking about eagles and turkeys and weird copyright. I have rules. no idea how I'm going to title this one, guys. <laughs> give us questions it's hard to do seo for this kind of video you know absolutely um and make sure that you check out jan's blog if you go to erank.com slash blog you can read the keyword top keywords for november we also have a video on it that pam recorded on the youtube channel if you're not subscribed over there uh you can watch the video if you're not in the mood to read it um yeah i think that that's it that's us yep okay guys thank you so much um don't forget to sign up with starla starla's thing midweek oh <laughs> and yeah I, I <laughs> com slash vip if you'd like me to coach you this season i've got my course open until tomorrow night at midnight We're, we say eleven fifty nine p.m eastern because if i say 12 a.m no one will do it right. They'll be a.m. p.m. I thought it closed in mid afternoon. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you next week. Okay.